yeah, uh, what does happen to Gendry? I can't remember what happens to him in the books. He kind of just... He just disappears. <laughs> yeah, because because that's right, because Arya goes off, and then we don't... He's... Yeah. Yeah. In the book, Arya okay. goes off, and then in the show, after he, you know, he's rescued from um, Dragonstone by um, Sir Davos, we, he's put on a ship. We never see him again. Yeah. But we must have, because he's like a, he's an heir to the Baratheon line. So surely we get to see some, mm -hmm. something from, you know, he's, a, he's an right. important character again, you know? Right. So, but, but I think that that's the whole point that we're not ever going to see Gendry again. You, you think you never don't, you think we'll never see him again. Nope. Nope. Because I think that it, it's better off with the mystery of the missing Gendry. Okay. You know, a piece of fish, you're just going to be in there. You're just going to be in the pan. <laughs> I'm not going to even worry about you. You're cooked. You'll be fine. You're done. Um, you're done. You're good. Oh, I, honey, I'm, you know, I know I'm nuts because I talk to my food even when, when no one's here. Right. <laughs> That's cool, man. I dig. I dig. <laughs> you don't want to see me cooking because I'm like, you better cook faster, motherfucker. You got time for all this shit. I ain't got time for this cooking bull bollocks. Right. Um, <laughs> but I think that, I think that there's always going to be one or two major characters with George that just disappear and you're never going to, mm -hmm. it's just going to be like, where the fuck is Gendry? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's kind of makes me, makes me kind of, I mean, I suppose that's kind of the thing, right? It makes you kind of like, ah, I want to know. And you'll never know. And that's, that's the mystery of life. Right. And you buy mm. the next book. <laughs> yeah. It makes buy you buy the next, next book. book. <laughs> because you want to be like, Hey, it's Gendry in here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God, I want that next book so bad. I, it's I, right. I want it bad, but but I also am like, am I gonna remember half the stuff? You know, if I start reading that, I, that's why I kind of wanted to read them all <laughs> again so I could remember half the stuff that I've probably forgotten. But you know what? I'll probably right. Fine, you know. And that's or that's how I feel. Like I, I can't remember. I, I I just started Clash of Kings again, and I'm just like, that. When did that happen? Yeah. Like I've never read it before, and I'm just like, oh god, I've forgotten so much. Yeah, I just, mm, I've got, I, like I say, stuff comes back to me. Like having this discussion is a lot of stuff has kind mm -hmm. of come back, come back to me. Um, but yeah, definitely, um, I definitely lost a lot along the way, I think. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's part I, of the fun too, is you, you, you forget a lot and then you start talking about it or you just start reading it and you go, oh yeah, I remember that. Fuck the, you know, fuck Sir mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. But are there any characters that you like specifically want to talk about, or have any like you know beef with, or you know you want to beat up or anything like that? Um, who do I think? Nah, I mean they're all. I really like Tyrion. I think Tyrion's great. Obviously. Um, yeah. John. Uh, well, if you didn't like Tyrion, we couldn't hang out. So <laughs> perfect. Well, that makes that's good then. Um, Tyrion, yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think. No, I think I think I've said it quite quite a lot at this point about all of that. Um, it's been it's been fun to actually think about uh, you know the the stuff more in depth. You know, like like how it all kind of goes. I felt I felt really sorry for um, for Mormon Jorah Mormon. You know. Um, oh yeah, Jorah friend you know. zone. Yeah, totally Jorah friend zone. Poor bastard. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it makes sense. She's like what fourteen, and he's like thirty something. You know. He's like forty something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you he, know, yeah. And on top of that, you know, Jorah is not very pretty. How about that? In the in the series, yeah. he's cute, but. In yeah, the books, yeah. it's clear like he's not very much of a looker, and it's just like I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame, eh? It's I mean, it's kind. Of, I suppose it's like that infatuation thing you were talking about with um with Renly and and Brienne, right? You know, they they're kind of in that same position. You know, she he's part of her Queen's Guard, and she's part right. of his Rainbow Guard, and they both, uh, you know. But I suppose Brienne, uh, respects those boundaries right to the end, you know. Well, that and Renly is gay as shit. Yeah, that's true as well. <laughs> I love, Gay I love it. as the hills. Right. Yeah, I the love old, it. The old night of flowers. Yeah, totally. Right. 
but Renly, I mean, and everybody knows it too. That's the thing. Like, I want to hear Cersei mm. talking about it. Like, you know, he was gay, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just gonna eat through this, babe. I'm, That's right, man. <laughs> I'm dying of hunger, so you're just gonna have to excuse me. So good, man. Um, so good. But yeah, I, I agree with the parallel that there's certainly like because of Renly's sexuality and because of you know the age difference that Danny feels, you know. And I think mm-hmm. if like I said, she didn't have a problem with it when it was Daria. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean that was that uh, I guess I suppose it's kind of a similar thing though, right? She Daria was what she was a handmaiden. Um Yeah. Well, kind of, yeah, it's kind of. <coughs> mm. This fish is killing me. Um, <laughs> you got all the bones out, mate? <laughs> no. <laughs> Obviously not. No. I, <coughs> well, if I choke, I get to choke and die on live stream. You'll be the last person to ever talk to me. So. Yes. I feel privileged. <laughs> Aw, tell, tell my boyfriend, though, I, that I'm, I'm going to miss him and, and tell Coughlin to bury me. Okay, um, I will. I will. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, that's right. I'd forgotten about I'd forgotten about um, Daria and her whole thing. Um, mm-hmm. I suppose, like, like with that, it was it was it was a lot to do with. Um, I mean, obviously, Danny uh, is a young young woman who's who's you know learning a whole bunch about her sexuality and stuff to do with Khal Drogo, and um, right. you know, so she and she gets pretty close with her handmaidens. You know, they obviously, you know. Oh yeah. Her and Cersei yeah. like to get real close with them handmaidens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. Fucking Cersei. <laughs> Getting Which a little I bit like, on the side. Right? Which mm-hmm. I think is adorable. Like, yeah, yeah, girl, you get that. You know, I'll hit that. Whatever. Yeah, yeah totally. Totally. Does that happen? Does 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 Danny's thing with, with, with Daria happen after Khal Drogo? Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. They're, that's and when that's they're where... in the read. Yeah, and then she then she betrays her, right? Does she betray? Dar- Daria oh, does, doesn't she? She, she but Daria betrays Danny to to the guy from Carth, um, doesn't she? And and it's and 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 um, right, right, right. That's how the dragons get to, uh, get stolen. No, 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 no. You're thinking of you're thinking of um. You're thinking of Zaro's Honor Doxus um, when they first reach Karth in the second season. Dario yeah. is, and uh, that's Clash of Kings. Dario oh, is like. Sorry, no, I'm thinking of the. I'm thinking of the handmaiden, not Dario. Sorry, you said Dario, and I thought you meant right. What's What's the handmaiden's name? Daria. She... Daria. Daria. There you go. That's sorry. That was what I was confused. There's a very similar names. Well, you know, George, he can't be naming everybody fancy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but no, because because Danny kind of has a thing with Daria as well, right? Like she, yeah, they 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 like sleep together, um, yeah, a bunch and whatnot. And she obviously is very close with her, um, and and then she is she is betrayed, um, by that by her. Um, sorry, that's who I was talking. That, uh, that's who I was talking about this whole time. I wasn't thinking of Dario at all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, hey, we made it back, babe. It's all good. We made yeah. it back. Um, yeah, but I mean, I suppose, yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't have a problem with Dario at all. Uh, obviously, because I suppose he's younger and 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 you know, flamboyant and you know. Right, right. Um, yeah. But at the same time, like I was saying, you know, she 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 rejects Jora as a lover, but Dario is not much younger than freaking Jora, you know. Yeah, I suppose that's but, true. But he, but I understand. But like you said, there is there's a nuance there where Dario's <laughs> mysterious and he's you know dangerous, and there's a whole lot about Dario that makes him more attractive than old porn ass Jorah. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, and I suppose like because because Jorah's been, uh, you know, ha- ha- has been her advisor and all that sort of stuff all this time, and she's obviously not mm-hmm. thought about him that way. You know, she, you know, it's like, you know, they they uh i think she she kind of indulges herself right like she th- she thinks about it like in the books you read and she she tries to put herself in that position and tries to see if she can love jora because she realizes yeah, she that, mm, but then she just she just can't because that's not the sort of person he is to her right right um, she, he's more of a fatherly figure if you will 
Yeah, um, yeah. And Daenerys, Daenerys uh, doesn't have those severe daddy issues that some of us are plagued with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and um, and then you know, so so Dario coming along, he's he's a new person, obviously, so he doesn't have that same relationship with her from the outset. So it's going right, to be right, right, right. Uh, um, it's totally yeah, different. So, Mm, mm. Oh, fair I'm half seeing the news and I'm like, yeah, people jump fair all the time. I mean, come on, bro. That's What's, what are you talking about? What's that? Oh, I was watching the news and it's, um, there's a story about people, you know, jumping in the fare machines and like not paying fare on the train. Oh, uh, yeah. And it's like, duh, that time. was right. Like, duh, that was like half of my youth. All right. Yeah. Done that plenty. Jeez. It's much easier in Germany right. because in Germany you do, you just there's no turnstiles. You just they you pay for the ticket and then you just have to have the ticket on you. And if they if someone asks you, then you have to show the ticket. But otherwise, you can just walk on there. Oh, honey, here it's basically the same. There's nobody. You just buy a ticket. You go through the little machine, um, mm. and you're good. No one asks mm. you for anything. And so, oh no, but see, there's, there's no machine. There's no machines for this. There, there's a there's there's no there's no turnstile. Germany's on the honor like system. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. She is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me call it my baby. That's where we're going to hit first. We're, if we go to Europe, we're going to Germany, bro. Yeah, Free yeah. fare all the way. Well, you know they're going to listen. I'm a brown person, so I can't get away with a lot of stuff. <laughs> so things yeah. that, that, you know, me being like, oh, yeah, because I can get because I'm in like San Francisco, so I can kind of get away with it, but not as much as I, I used to be able to. Ah, oh, jeez. That sucks. <laughs> but, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's all good. It's not that expensive to move around anyway. Right, right. Like mm -hmm. you just don't want to pay the two fifty. I know. Gah. You know. Come on. Well, hey, hey. I'm cheap. All right. I've never made any bones about how cheap I am. All right. Yeah, man. I barely I mean, want to I'm pay a, people's a... Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a traveler, so you know. Yeah, I get the same. You know, I, I, I have to be as cheap as I possibly can. Otherwise, I run out of money and I can't get home. <laughs> Right, right, and then you're stuck. Yep. You're stuck in fucking bumfuck Ohio somewhere. All right, having to have sex with a milk girl to get on the back yep. of her cart and get home. Story of my life, man. Story of my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, I'll be right back. Hold on. Yeah, man. Okay, so I suppose I got to talk about some Game of Thrones stuff by myself. Um, let me think. What do I? What do I think about Game of Thrones? It's been a long time since I've thought about Game of Thrones. Um, What's a good part? Yeah, the whole, the whole, uh, I was thinking about the whole Tyrion dagger thing. Cause you kind of get explained that a little bit later. Um, and I suppose it kind of confused me because, cause you, you know, the brand thing happens in the, in the first book. And then I don't think you get it explained to you who it was or how it went down until like the third or fourth book, because, cause someone confronts Cersei about it. Jamie, yeah, because it's. I think it's when Jamie comes back. Jamie comes back, um, having you know been away and having had his arm chopped, uh, his hand chopped off, and all that. And then he came back with Brienne, I think. And then he gets back and he confronts Cersei about um, about the, the 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 Tyrion thing because you know obviously he was wrapped up in that with Tyrion and Caitlin and all that sort of business. And then he got caught by Caitlin and, and she confronted him about, you know, trying to kill her son. Um, and then, so she can, sorry, Jamie confronts Cersei about it at some point. And she must say something, you know, cause she, she's, she, she obviously doesn't know anything about it. She's like, oh, I'm, uh. And then they must sort of come to the conclusion that it was Joffrey, I suppose, that did it. Um, and then because Joffrey had the had that the, the, the Tyrion's dagger um, after something, yeah, because 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 Joffrey lost it to to oh sorry, Tyrion lost it to um, to Littlefinger, and Littlefinger must have given it to Joffrey, maybe. I'm trying to remember. I have to wait till Lady gets back, and she can. She'll probably know. But yeah, so that that bit was all. You know, I remember. I remember reading. You know, and then that mystery being there because he he weaves all these mysteries in the first book, which don't get answered for a long time. 
um, and it's kind of frustrating, but I suppose it's what <laughs> it's what keeps you reading, right? You you have to you have to keep reading to figure out what the friggin' hell's going on, and then there's mysteries on top of mysteries and shit, and and all these things get intertwined. Um, but yeah, because that is that is one of the things that drives quite a bit of the the action in the first in the first book, you know, because Bran gets pushed out, and that leads Caitlin to to go off and capture Tyrion. Why does she leave? She doesn't. She goes off to that's right no because she she she's in King, she's in Winterfell, and then it comes to light that 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 maybe someone killed John Aaron and that means that Ned's in trouble. And so she needs to go to King's Landing along the way. She runs into Tyrion and she, um, she asks for the help of the locals to capture Tyrion, take him to the Eyry and where he'll serve trial. And that's when uh, Tyrion calls upon his, uh, his, his dude to, um, to be all dishonorable in battle and all that sort of business. Um, and that's when Tyrion escapes. So yeah, and that that uh, by this point, there's been a whole bunch of shit that's gone down in in uh, King's Landing. So I suppose there's that as well. Is 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 Ned's gone to King's Landing? Um, I wonder what I'm trying to think why, what Joffrey's reason was for for trying to to kill Bran because that is I don't, I'm not sure if that was related to John Aaron because like like we said earlier, I think the John Aaron thing um, was definitely a huge driver for a lot of stuff as well. I mean, it's a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, of what, you know, Ned's kind of, um, problem solving and you know, mystery, trying to solve the mystery of Do John Aaron's death, um, at the behest of some people, you know, cause, cause he, I can't remember whether he suspects something. Oh, I think it might be because Catelyn comes. Catelyn comes, that's right, she gets to King's Landing, then on the way back she finds Tyrion. And um when she gets to King's Landing, she she uh says that she tells Ned. I can't remember what it is that makes her suspect though. That's the thing. But she tells Ned. And he from then starts to look into it more. And that's what gets him in a lot of trouble with the Lannisters and, you know all that sort of business. And then as a result, Littlefinger, um, and, and discovering, discovering that the sea, you know, cause the whole reason that John Aaron was, was killed off is because he realized that the seed is strong, um, which is his code for, you know, um, go where he first thinks it's, it's the seed is strong. You know, he's talking about, um, you know, jo uh, sorry, um, Robert's bastards. So he goes off and he finds, that's when he finds Gendry, um, but then he realizes that it's to do with the Lannister kids and the fact that, that, that Jamie and, and, and Cersei are actually, um, bumping uglies, <laughs> uh, and, the, and that those kids aren't, they're, they're all actual bastards. And, and so Joffrey doesn't have a claim to the throne and all that sort of business. And so he tells, that's when he tells Cersei, uh, you know, he reveals his hand that he knows this. And that's when, you know, because he thinks that he has Littlefinger on his side. He thinks he has the town guard on his side. And so he reveals to, you know, to Cersei, because he's such an honorable man, that that he he knows this stuff and that she should take her kids and leave because they will die otherwise. Uh, but unfortunately, he does not suspect that um, the others, um, yeah, that the others are actually going to turn on him. And that becomes his downfall. Um but yeah, that's all kind of driven by that initial death of John Aaron, because John Aaron discovered, well, I suppose the initial thing is is that, that Cersei and Jamie were were making babies and 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 uh, which in turn is driven by um by by Cersei and, and Robert's relationship. You know, maybe maybe you know, maybe she would have had kids with Robert had he not been in love with Liana and and wanted to you know, and, and being so infatuated with her, um, that, that drove Cersei away from Robert, you know? And so, so maybe, maybe they would have had kids and the whole Jamie and her thing wouldn't have happened. And as a result, then it wouldn't have led to John Aaron dying, which would not have led to, to Ned dying. And we wouldn't have a very exciting story. <laughs> um, I'm just rambling at this point because I don't really know what else to talk about, but yeah, it's, um, 
it's interesting how that that whole backstory kind of you know all the stuff that happens uh you know a whole bunch before you know what would we say 17 years or something before you know i mean well, that that was when yeah when 17 years before the the, the initial story started the stuff that drives the story forward even even in, in the present um yeah it's quite it's quite fascinating he's built quite the amazing uh world for us it seems yeah um so yeah uh, but yeah, that, 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 that mystery of, of who killed John Aaron, was that, that must've been, that must've been Cersei, I think. It must've been. Um, What's up, kid? Hey, hey, sorry, I've just been rambling. I've been, I've been, I've been slowly unraveling the, basically the first story in my mind, the, the, the Game of Thrones story of, 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 um, of Bran being pushed out the window, uh -huh. um, which which led to the whole thing with Tyrion and whatnot. But then, like the mystery of of who actually went to try and kill Bran, um, you know, after the fact. And I think we 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 come to the conclusion that it's Joffrey because because yeah. Jaime confront confronts Cersei about it, right? And she's like, "I have no idea." How do how do we then mm -hmm. discover that it was Joffrey? Um. We, I, well, from what I have surmised, I really surmised that it was Joffrey because um, <clears throat> Joffrey had wanted to impress his father, whom he had overheard talking yeah. about it. But yeah. I, I have heard, you know, I do kind of sometimes indulge in some of the theory channels um, on YouTube about Game of Thrones. And I, I will go with Preston Jacobs, who is, he's kind of out there with his theories, but he does have this theory that we're being led to believe that it was Joffrey, but we don't have any evidence that it right. was Joffrey. Right, right, right. And so we true, really, we're kind of, we're still kind of at the point where we don't know who it is and Joffrey's the best answer. See, <laughs> so where, where, where did the, where did the, uh, the, the, where did the, the whole dagger thing lead? Because as far as I know, because it was Tyrion's dagger and he lost it to Littlefinger and attorney. And then what happened? Well, it was, it? yeah. Uh -huh. Well, it was never Tyrion's dagger. Oh, really? It was all, uh, from what I remember, and I mean, don't quote me on this, right? Um, it was, uh, <laughs> I'm going to release this and people are going to be like, you guys got everything wrong. <laughs> um, it was always Littlefinger's dagger. He made up that whole story about losing it to Tyrion Lannister in a you know tourney um, because okay. Tyrion never bets against his his brother. Right, 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 right. Okay, so um, so how did how the, did so then how is Littlefinger related to uh, Bran trying to get killed? The the assassination um, the, the well, we don't know how Littlefinger. Hit, who how how the dagger came into the possession of whomever gave it to the cat's paw yeah okay okay so that yeah that's that's what i'm confused yeah, we're not too sure about okay so so yeah we don't have necessarily any evidence um because uh, how how Go would ahead. joffrey then have gotten the dagger to give to the cat's paw well um the the, th the leading theory that Tyrion comes up with is mm. that Joffrey stole th that the dagger was a either a gift to Robert Baratheon from Littlefinger or something of some something of the sort in which right. it came into Robert's possession. Right. And, and, then and then Robert and then Joffrey stole it from Robert. Right. Gotcha. Tyrion's th line of thinking being, you know, hey, Robert's got a million fucking daggers. He doesn't know what he owns. He's drunk all the time and fucking ladies. He doesn't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. OK. OK. But we definitely know that John Aaron was killed by Cersei. Is that right? No, John Aaron was killed by um, Lysa and Littlefinger. Oh. Uh, how did that happen? Um, Lysa poisoned him. Why? Um, because, well, again, we're back into speculation. One, yeah. the, the, the leading thing is that <laughs> Littlefinger poisoned John Aaron to start strife um, between Catelyn's family, Lysa and them, um, John, and John Aaron's child, and the Lannisters. 
Okay. Because okay. they would immediately pin it on the Lannisters. Okay. Gotcha. Lysa, one, one reason that we believe Lysa did it was because they were, um, Tywin <laughs> wanted to foster Littlefinger. I mean Littlefinger. Tywin wanted to foster um, the little baby, John Aaron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Not John Aaron. God, what the fuck is the baby's name? Robin Aaron. Robin, and, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and she would have rather, you know, killed fucking ten men than to see yeah. her son raised effectively by Tywin Lannister. Although it probably gotcha. would have been good for his little ass, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's okay, the kind of okay. leading theory. Okay. And it sounds the yeah. you know, most correct to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. So the, my whole thing, I just my whole ramble just before was that you know Cersei had done it because because of the whole seed is strong thing, but obviously that wasn't the case then. <laughs> But that, so that is that is what people would assume then, and so that's why it created some strife between the families. Right. And that's what um, that's what um, that's what Ned obviously thought was the case. Yeah, yeah, and Ned, and we yeah. got to you know, Ned is not that fucking. I mean, he's a soldier, surely mm -hmm. and truly, he's a soldier, but he's not that smart. Yeah. <laughs> As evidenced by the fact that he should have had sex with Cersei in the in, uh, in front of that weirwood tree. What Cersei? Yeah. Okay. the The confrontation scene where he confronts Cersei about um, her incest with Jamie. They're yeah. at, they're in the Godswood in at, yeah. at King's Landing, where the weirwood trees, where the last kind of weirwood trees in the South are. And yeah. Cersei starts pushing up on him like, hey, my brother is a thousand leagues away. So is your wife. What are you trying to do? That's right. Yep. You know? And um, That's right. he's like, and he's like, nah, and I would have been like, yeah, hit that. <laughs> Which, I mean, I'm pan. So anybody, so everybody is fair game to me. All right. Mm. I, I feel like hit, I, I would hit that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily know that it, that he's not that smart, though. He's he's just like I've said before. He's he's an honorable person. That's his, he he. When I say honorable, he's got his honor that he will not break. Right. He did it once, and he will not do it again. Well, um, he didn't though. He he had that's a lot. Oh, I think I didn't know that. I'm I might sorry. Have known that. That's all right. No, no, no. It's all right. I think I kind of knew that anyway. Um, that kind of comes up at some point. Um, that's that's fine. No, it's good. It's good. Um, but but um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll refrain. Well, they, well then, no, no, no. Well, there you go. He, he, he. Uh, to the end, is an honorable man. Right. Uh, but but he doesn't. But he but he's not smart enough to recognize where honor and loyalty can fall down, and where. Um, where yeah, I see what you mean. Sort of fall down, and where you have to when you're playing this, when you're playing with these people, when you're trying to get, you know, in, in effect, when you're trying to get your way, where you have to make an attempt, and be deceptive. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And to, and to not let your intentions be known. Mm. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I don't mean not very smart in terms of, you know, he's, he's not Hodor or anything. Um, and mm. I, hey, Hodor is smart as shit. All right. <laughs> um, but he's, um, he, he kinda, doesn't kind of real, you know, he said, go, go ahead. Hunt. I was just going to say, it kind of feeds into that whole uh, Stark North thing. You know, like I was saying, I was saying before about um, my, my qualms with how, uh, John was handled in the TV show as opposed to the books. Like when he, when he um, has what the hell's her name, the the the, the wildling chick, um, Egret. Egret, yeah. So he he's got her and he's been told that he needs to kill her and she's tied up and he goes to kill her. But in the books, he purposefully misses and then tells her to leave. Right. In the show, it seemed to me yeah. that he he accidentally missed and she kicked him away, and then so he had to chase after her kind of thing. But that's not how it happened in the book, and that kind of spoke to his character as a person who wouldn't kill an innocent person just because that was the way things are. And that seems kind of the same with with Ned, right? Like he doesn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't kill. I mean, Cersei is far from innocent, but he, he, I suppose he's thinking about the children, right? He he. Um, mm -hmm. He, he wouldn't let them, well, I suppose that, you know, it's the women and children thing or whatever, you know, he, he doesn't want, the, he wouldn't harm those people to, to better well, himself. The kids know? are innocent, right? They don't, they don't, you know, they don't have any, yeah. 
thing to do with it. They were brought into the world the way they, that they were, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> through incest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so that's that that's that kind of honorable thing that he sticks to into the end. That right, he, right. But but know. there is a million and one ways um, that aren't. There's a whole lot of ways to handle that. Yeah. Um, that don't necessarily involve, you know, in my mind, uh, he should have rode out to, to the Kingswood and told Robert immediately. There was no reason um, to even tell Cersei, right? Cersei yeah, is the it, one who doing, committed doing the that, crime. Doing that, wouldn't that then lead to the kids and him being... Her, not necessarily, being... not necessarily, because you can fucking you can fucking ride back to the keep, put them kids on a wagon or whatever, and send them off to Casterly Rock if you have to. And, and remember, you can always tell Robert, listen, you can ransom these kids, you can fucking... Because the Lannisters are going to want them back. There's no way yeah, yeah, yeah. the Tywin doesn't want his grandkids back, no matter how they came into the world. Um, mm, true, true, true. There, you know, you can... Yeah, no, that's true. You could bypass Cersei completely, kidnap the kids if you had to, and put them on the back of a wagon yourself. Tell them. Mm -hmm. Tell them, hey, you're the product of incest between your mother, between your mother and Jamie Lannister. If you don't get on the back of this freaking cart, you're gonna die. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I suppose that's true. Yeah, he could have so yeah, I, I see what you mean then. Not very smart in the way that he dealt with that uh right. that um that situation. To, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I can do um, it. I, I, I like Ned, but you can't, you don't run up to the murderer and be like, I know you killed him, you know, and, and, and yeah. point out to him and give him time to flee. You, you go to the nearest authorities and you tell them, or you mm. figure out something else to do. Um, mm. But Ned, I think that his honor got him caught up in a way that he, he didn't expect because he's not a player of the Game of Thrones. He's a northerner. Mm. And up north, mm. things are a lot more straightforward. I think that has to do with the, the influence of the first men and the, and the wildlings, too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, totally, over totally. time, have, have intermarried. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Do you think he I, also I think, doesn't... Because he, he, also, he also thinks... He, I mean, he, he also thinks that Littlefinger's on his side as well, and, and the city guard, is, uh, that too, you know? Yeah, yeah, so thinks, and I think that too. He figures he's got, he's got that power, so... Yeah. Know, and instead of, um, and he doesn't quite see, like he, he's blinded by Littlefinger's mask in some ways. Um, and, and I don't blame Catelyn because she grew up with him. Um, to a certain extent, she kind of knows he's, he loves her or whatever. So she, she is, she's trying to use that to still keep a hold of Littlefinger. But at the end of the day, you don't need to ask very many people. You know, he could have asked Varys. Varys, not like Varys didn't come to him in the course of this and try to help, you know, kind of yeah, half yeah. try to help, try to hurt. And yeah. and the thing to have done was to ask about Littlefinger's reputation. Was to and, and he remember, he's ready to kill Littlefinger, um, which is the best instinct he had the whole damn time, best political instinct he had. Um, he's ready to kill Littlefinger for saying that his wife is in a brothel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. He knows Little. He knows Littlefinger to be oozy and slimy and disgusting, and um, yet he trusts him. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird, right? Right, um, and, and that's that's Ned being a trusting person too. That you know, I don't know that I blame him for his character. Um, mm. I think he's just not, you know, he's he's encountered he's not encountered people like this. Who, you know, yeah, that's like you say. Up in the up in the north, he he just doesn't, you know. I mean, it, 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 he'd be. You know, in Winterfell, just surrounded by people he can trust all the time. There's there's none of this intrigue and crazy shit that's going on, um, you know. And then he's right. thrust into this position of the hand of the king where there's just all this, you know, chess pieces being moved around and people trying to, you know, manipulate everyone else left, right, and center. It's just a completely yeah. different thing to what he's used to, you know. <laughs> and, and King's Landing, I'm and good. from what we know, King's Landing is like that, you know. Yeah. Um, they, and so I think that he's completely, you know, he has been in the capital in nearly 20 years. I think he's completely unprepared for, for what um, is ahead of him. And I think that, but I do put some of that on him because they rode a month, you know, they rode several weeks. He had time to meet some of the courtiers, to talk to Robert about what was going on. And I think that he, he thought he could remain as distant as he had always been. Um without kind of understanding that you can't, you've got to be intimate. You've got to make friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
And I think that the, the kind of quintessential moment, and I'll throw it over to you, but I think the, the quintessential moment in all that is when he first enters the council chamber, and I believe this happens in the books and in the series, and he just, I mean, people greet him. You know, Varys is like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear about what happened to you on the King's Road. He's like, well, it's a shame you didn't say a prayer for the butcher's boy. And it's like, come on, bro, people trying to make friends. You tripping, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that lack of political instinct. And that la- and that kind of almost Stannis esque, you know. I don't need friends. I I'm I'm the honorable Lord Eddard. Um, yeah, people yeah, will yeah, just yeah. you know that that kind of gets him in trouble. So yeah, for sure, for sure. Do you think he um? Do you think he um? Because he's kind of reluctant to go, obviously, to be the hand of mm-hmm. the king. Um. So do you think that plays into it as well? Maybe him. Uh, feeling like the role is, is potentially kind of temporary, that he doesn't want to get to, uh, you know, he kind of wants to go there, do his thing, and then then he can go back home kind of thing? Almost. I almost, you know, you do, you get that feeling from him that he, mm. um, he definitely doesn't think this is going to be a long haul. Um, and I get that feeling just because, you know, I, if it were me, everybody, the only pe- person I'm leaving behind is Theon, and Rob at Winterfell. Everybody else, including Bran, including John, everybody's coming to King's Landing. My entire household, every, it would be fucking Winterfell can run on minimal staff for all I care. Yeah, 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 true story. But see, I suppose uh, that's what he did. He, he he left everyone there under the assumption of, oh, I'll be back kind of soon. Just you yeah. know, chill, chill on it and, you know. And um, like I said, you can't really blame him because he had been out of the politics of it. And Robert was distant from the politics as well, but he mm. was the king. And so yeah, yeah. he kind of had that prerogative where Ned mm. was, you know, it's Ned. Once he became hand of the king, it became Ned's job to understand all of the politics and to be the one who does the job of the king. Effectively. Mm. Yeah, um, exactly. Well, well, Robert's off whoring and drinking. <laughs> Right. Um, Mm. Which I can't I can't blame Robert for because God, you know, one thing that we don't take into account kind of because of the books we we, we only get glimpses of are just the PTSD that these characters end up suffering from. You know, these are two young young men who at a young age were constantly faced with death, you know, not just via, you know, military means. But if they didn't kill the Mad King, the Mad King was going to kill them. Um, Mm. So, um, sure. And I mean, I, I think that Robert to like that. I mean, for for Robert, you know, he he again, again, I suppose, kind of like Ned. You know, they're not rulers; they're warriors. You know, but right, right, totally. Rob comes into this power, and you know, what's he gonna do? You know, right. Um, and Robert is um, like, <laughs> honey, we could go. I mean, literally, we're gonna talk about this all day. <laughs> <laughs> I Robert is the type of person whom I mean, and we don't even know how you know. I, I won't say that. I say Robert's an excellent warrior because that's that's kind of the mythos that that permeates their society. But mm. Robert is running on pure fury. You know, yeah. he's he's upset behind his his woman, and he wants to get his woman back and he get the love of his life back. So um, you can definitely tell that um robert you know robert's definitely running on that kind of war fury and of course you know nine years later they end up fighting the Greyjoys and winning too um Mm. but robert is a person who's much more comfortable at war than he is at peace that's right yeah totally and he says that a lot right you know he's he wants to get back in the saddle and and, you know and do all that and that's why he goes hunting and 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 all that sort of business you know because he yeah and that's part of the re- yeah yeah agreed and that's part of the reason he wants to kind of kill Daenerys I mean I'm sure if it were up to him he would have you know gotten on a boat and done it himself um mm. because he <laughs> he would fight all of the Dothraki if he could um, yeah 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 totally totally he's, he, that's what he wants and mm. I I can't blame Robert for that I think that Robert just like women are locked into the role just like Cersei's locked into the role of being kind of an imperial breeder and um, Daenerys is sort of locked into the role of being sold off to Khal Drogo Robert is locked into the role of being a great warrior mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he doesn't you know he doesn't know anything else he doesn't know how to do anything else and so he's He's got to stick with what he knows, and and so you and that's kind of the thing about Game of Thrones is that 
once you start to think about it, you know, on that kind of, once you start to get analytical about it and you're not just kind of enjoying the story, you begin to really, you know, as you said, you really start to sympathize with these characters and sort of what they have to deal with in terms of not having the freedom to be who they are or to think the way they want to think or to do what they want to do. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, like you say, um, with, with Robert, uh, you know, if you look at it from his perspective, he's, he's lost the love of his life. Um, you know, the woman that he, that he was infatuated with. And then mm -hmm. he's kind of put with this other woman. Um, and like you say, the PTSD potentially, you know, he's, the, the, he's all the stuff that he's seen. Can you blame him for being driven to the drink? <laughs> you know, it's, it's... I can't, right? Like I can't because he's, he so desperately, um, is looking for for some meaning in it. You can, you can tell he's just looking for some meaning in that being the king doesn't provide mm. much. You know? Yeah, but that yeah, it's, it's it's an interesting interesting thing as well. Is 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 having all that power and all that you know money and and, and all that sort of stuff, and he's still not a happy person. You know, that's another yeah. thing you can kind of can kind of grasp from that. Eh? And then you've got someone like Arya, who you could say to some degree is sort of happy because she's able to, she's got so much freedom. She's got so much that for, for her to go and, and to discover and, 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 and seek things and, and, and find new things and, and, and really, um, you know, advance her life, you know, and her experience because of that, because she's got, she, she doesn't have a lot of power, but she's got that, um, that freedom to go and kind of do that stuff, you know? Um, and I oh, wouldn't yeah. necessarily, and I'm not saying that she's necessarily a happy person, but but um, she, she's not stuck in a in a in a place in a in a role like like you say in a role in a in a um, all that sort of business where she has to be. I mean, Robert can't not be the king. He's the king. That's what he's got to do. You know. Yep. And and I agree with you. I think that Arya, um, and and you can juxtapose that with you know Sansa or nearly anyone else. Um, Arya is is truly free in a way that most of the other characters, uh, no matter who you, I mean, from Danny to Melisandre to Stannis, um, or particularly Stannis, you know, who very mm, much sees mm. himself locked into that role of I'm going to be the king. I'm the next one in line. It's my job. I have to do this. It's my duty. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Very much is the only character who is free you know, mm. who is, who can do as she pleases and, you know, male or female. I can't yeah. think of anyone else who has Arya's freedom, maybe Hot Pie and like Gendry who don't have that, um, who don't feel necessarily that responsibility. Um, I think Bran to some degree, but I mean, obviously he's, he's come across a lot of responsibility um, with yeah. his with powers or whatever, but I think he, he has a certain amount of freedom, uh, especially when he's in the wolf. Um, you know, he's got a certain amount of freedom. Uh, more, like I think, I think more so than than like some of these other characters, like you say. You know, but definitely not as much as Arya. You know. Oh, oh, definitely, definitely. I, I can agree with that. I, I think that he, up until the point in which, um, you know, well, well, I will say this too. Mind you, he he becomes like Lord of Winterfell, so he's not free to, you know, sort of do anything outside. Yeah, of the book. there's well, that right. period where. Theon sort of takes over and, you mm -hmm. know, they're on the run where mm -hmm. his only, because his only thought is survival, similar to Arya's, he doesn't have to, he no longer has to worry about being burdened by the responsibility of being a prince or a king or, you know, whatever, or, you know, a mm -hmm. lord. He's, he's able to sort of choose his own adventure, if you will. <laughs> um, yeah, too. Yeah. And, um. But yeah, before that, he, he like you say, he he is the the Lord of Winterfell for for a certain period of time, where you know, so he's very much locked into that. Um, yeah. But he he and takes that, some. Well, the only times he becomes free is when he's got those 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 the the, the wolf dreams, right? Right, right. He feels and that's, that freedom, and you can really feel that he, that's something that he wants to be. I mean, because of the restraints of because he's got those two restraints. He's got the he's got the restraint of you know, of the, of the role, but then the physical restraint of just not being out. He's got no legs. He can't use his legs, you know? Right. Mm. I don't mean to laugh at that. It's just kind of, I mean, the way you said it was kind of funny. <laughs> no, that's all right. No, I mean, it's just that there's, there's, there's two kind of, you know, there's the very physical right. can't move. And then there's the, the, the kind of 
the role can't move as well, you know, so he's got those two restrictions, but that all sheds away when he jumps inside that wolf and he can, he can run for the hills, you know? Oh yeah. And, and Arya similarly, you know, when she's in the house of black and white and sort of, that's the first time in a long time she's been restrained. Um, mm. <laughs> she, she finds freedom in her wolf dreams. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think in some ways that, there's there's again there's something there that is just kind of hard to articulate but you can viscerally sort of understand it you know the idea that the moment that you can see through an animal's eyes um is the moment that you're kind of truly free the moment that you are um you shed the restrictions of being a human you know and all the responsibilities that come along with just being alive um, mm. as a human being it doesn't matter who you are or what you know where what social strata you're from um, is the moment that you are actually free and mm. I, I suppose the roles of the animals in 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 the different societies is 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 kind of speaks to that as well right you know you've got the dothraki with their horses very mm -hmm. you know their connection with their horses and then the wildlings and they're very you know more tribal way they've obviously got a lot of animals um you know as well uh, and the way that, that they kind of the roles they kind of play in their society and then then the very um you know the, the very strict i mean you've got crows and that's about it in the you know that but they're 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 very purposeful animals that are just there to do their purpose and that's it and in, in, yeah, in yeah, the kind yeah. of Westeros society you know mm -hmm. um so not a lot of freedom because they that, that's their thing they go off and they do their thing and that's it um uh i don't know if that's actually anything meaningful but i just kind of thought of that just <laughs> the well, well the i think there's play. i think there's something there in terms of um the connection between the ravens of the citadel whose only real job in life is to deliver messages between these royal houses and mm. um the 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 black brothers of the night's watch also called the crows you know mm -hmm. they um they once they are on the wall their only purpose in life is to protect the wall and protect the seven kingdoms from what lies beyond sure um, sure and so i think there's a parallel there it's just we got to suss it out yeah, yeah <laughs> totally totally yeah, the, do we know that the whole uh, Nymera, um, you know, Arya's wolf, um, mm -hmm. we kind of have bits of her, you know, because there's there's those legends of the of the of the, the the wolf pack and stuff that's like roaming around the place killing a bunch of people, right? Is that that's something right. that's happening, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, and Arya kind of has a connection with her still. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Arya still can walk, even even though she's in Bravo, she can still walk into um, Nymeria. Yeah, she's just really far away and doesn't know where she is. Right. Mm. Um, and it's it's. I don't know if it's. Um, I think Arya is wogged in the Nymeria when she removes, um, Catelyn's body from the. Um, uh, oh yeah. From the river. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think I remember that. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, Ooh um, shit. That's right, some, like that's that's, that's, that's some good. existential crisis right there. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All these oh, people, okay. like, I, if I had to choose a job in Westeros, like, if I had to, like, live in their universe, I would mm. try to be, like, a therapist to the elites. Because the, all <laughs> these people need, like, severe therapy. Right. right? I, that's them. what I would be doing. About the problems. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Oh, like, shit. Like, you can talk to me. Yeah, we can we can talk this out. Don't worry about it. It'd be sweet. Right? Come on, come um, on, Tywin. Just open up a little bit. You know, I was actually I was thinking before I, I forgot to, to to say this, but you know, like one of the gr one of the really cool bits in the story I thought was when Arya meets Tywin, and they get to talking. Yeah, yeah, you know I agree. I, mean? I and so you get to. I, I love that part. Yeah, yeah, uh, because you know you kind of get to talk to Tywin a little bit. And again, it's, I mean, you don't, you don't get the full story from Tywin, but you definitely get a bit more of a, uh, you know, you, you get a little bit of a, like a, Oh, maybe he's not, you know, it's not the full inside his head to get to sympathize with them thing or empathize at all, but you, you, you get a little bit of something there because you actually get to hear from Tywin a little bit. Right. And, and about how he True. thinks about his family and his kids and his wife, you know, True. And I mean, I, you, I, you kind of get that, 
you kind of get that from uh, you know his hatred of Tyrion, of of the fact that Tyrion is the one that killed his wife. He he has that, you know, and so he obviously uh, cared for his wife, and is, is, has that has had a profound impact on him as a human, you know. Oh yeah, uh, mm. but, you know. <laughs> oftentimes what I'll do is like, I'll read the wiki sometimes just to kind of refresh and see like, okay, mm. what well, you know, mm. and um, one thing that's clear is that Tywin loved his wife very, very much. It's, it's said that the only time that Tywin ever smiled was at their wedding. Mm. Um, Tywin, um, Tywin says to Cersei in the show, you know, I don't distrust you because you're a woman. I distrust you because you're not as smart as you think you are. And his reference to I don't distrust you because you're a woman is because Joanna was his partner. You know, she she helped him mm. um, develop his tactics. She, yeah, yeah. You know, so he doesn't. I think one thing we can say about Tywin is he doesn't necessarily view women as lesser. You know, there you can tell like Robert totally does. Yeah. Robert does not view women as partners. He views them as something to sleep with. Mm. Um, but. Tywin clearly does. And Tywin yep. is, he's so complicated because he clearly has daddy issues and yeah. he has kid issues. You know, his <laughs> children are in grace. And they are. I was talking, we were talking, you know, me and Christy were talking earlier about kind of Tywin and um, just how all of the children, Ty Tyrion, Lan um, Lan I was going to say Lancel, Tyrion. <sighs> Um, Jamie and um, Cersei, Cersei, right? They all mm. hide behind Tywin. Every time something goes wrong in their lives, it's, I'm going to tell Tywin. I'm going to get Tywin. My father this, my father that. Mm. Mm. Um, children who have, have always grown up in their father's shadow and look to him for protection throughout their life. I mean, they're, they're in their freaking 40s, dude. And they're still talking about my father this, my father. It's like, Jamie, then handle this shit, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, and, and, and a, a sort of contrast to, to Ned and to the Starks and stuff, he's definitely not the sort of person, well, he is the sort of person, sorry, who is totally okay with, um, you know, innocent people dying uh, to further his family, right? You know, that, I mean, that's the that's yeah. his thing, is, is, is preserving his family's name. Um, there's a great... I think there's a great monologue in the, the TV series in the first series where he, I think, I think it's this bit where, where, where Tywin, Jamie comes into the tent and Tywin's um, skinning a deer and he, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. has this great monologue. I think it's that point where he talks about family and the, the, the preservation of the name, the family and all that sort of stuff. And that's obviously a very important thing to him as well. Um, and, and he won't let anything get in the way of that, even his own family. Right. And yeah. and what I find and and I agree that that's that's one of the greatest moments of Tywin where he's giving that speech to Jamie about you know mm. we could either set up a dynasty that lasts a thousand years or we could crumble into nothing like the Targaryens did. It's mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. up to you, you know. Mm. And yeah, Jamie yeah, totally. is like, whatever, nigga. I'm trying to fuck Cersei. <laughs> you know, like he does not give like they they yeah. they don't they don't kind of see. It, it's interesting because. <laughs> They're they're all by bypassing each other. They don't see where Tywin is correct, and they need to kind of follow his advice, which has always been why I said Cersei needed to tell Tywin about Tommen and all, and the fact that she was sleeping with uh, Jamie sooner. Mm. So she should have told him that. Yeah. Because it would not have Tywin would not have executed any of his grandkids. He would have just been like, okay, how are we gonna? He would have just changed strategies to figure out how, how we're gonna, gonna keep the secret. Yeah, right? Like, it wasn't going to be a big... It was going to be a big deal, and he would have lectured them forever about it, but at the end of the day, he wasn't... No harm was going to come to their children or to them because of what happened. Um, yeah, yeah, but Ty, but but they do kind of bypass each other in that Tywin is so obsessed with his family's legacy that he doesn't... That And Cersei kind of points this out, that he doesn't notice what his actual family is doing and how that's hurt them. Um, mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, But they sure. don't... They don't recognize why Tywin is so obsessed with their family legacy and why it means so much to him. Hmm. Um, and partially yeah, so it's because he's getting, getting older. 
Mm. Right. It's that, it's that disconnect. He's getting older. Um, he's, he knows his kids. He knows that Cersei lightweight and competent. He knows that Jamie is a preening kind of bastard. He knows mm. that Tyrion is an, is a little asshole who insults everybody he fucking meets and has sex with whores. Right. Yeah. Yep. He knows his kids. And so mm. he, he feels like, Ooh, these little ingrates get on my motherfucking nerves. And I just want, you know, I want my family to maintain. He's worried about the very thing that's probably going to happen to House Lannister, which is it's going to fall into the dirt. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not able to reconcile that with, you know, I've got to treat my children, you know, and, and, well, well, let me back that up. Before I say that, I would say this. We all, but, but he is a hypocrite because look at how he treats Tyrion, who is his child. Mm. Right. He, yeah. he can sit there and talk about, you know, and, and this is why where I think the dis disconnect comes for Jamie, Cersei and Tyrion. He sits there and he talks about family, family, legacy, families, everything you got to do for your family. But he treats his family like shit. Mm hmm. Yeah, totally. So totally. You can't you can't as a person, you know, as a as a person, you can't really reconcile when someone is being saying something like that to you but then their actions are completely antithetical to what they're saying to you you know it it doesn't make you want to believe what they're saying to be true certainly yeah i suppose like like you say i think he's i suppose he's just like ultimately wrapped up um in in the preservation of family um and i mean obviously that that that, that hatred um for for Tyrion come you know like so he obviously treats um yeah he, he's wrapped up in that in in that um that what that that want for the preservation of of the name and stuff and mm -hmm. like you say he's trying to he, I, I suppose he he would get ultimately um you know more and more frustrated with them because he knows that that the, he can see the way that it's heading because of how his children are and that's compounded with various other things like his hatred for Tyrion because of he he sees Tyrion as the reason his wife is dead um and various other things you know um yeah. so um yeah and 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 they kind of just they kind of feed into each other you know he's he, he he's trying his best to try and uh, put his family stamp on 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 the 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 thing of history, you know. Um, oh yeah. While also d dealing with the fact that his kids aren't as, I mean, his kids are more concerned with the here and now rather than the big picture. That's his that's his thing, right? His big picture yeah. is seeing and trying to get the the longevity of his family. But when, whereas Cersei's concerned with power here and now, Jamie's concerned with whatever the fuck he's concerned about, and and Tyrion the fucking just, Cersei baby. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And then, and then Tyrion's just, you know, uh, doing his thing as well. You know, so, right? It's but, it's it's hard to even um, determine what what Tyrion wants. Right. You know, um, the, to me, the best <laughs> the best line in Game of Thrones. One of the best lines is um, Tywin and. Keep going. Sorry, my sister was just saying hi. Oh, it's good. It's good. I always, whenever I hear someone in the background, I'm like, "You shut up. Let them talk to real humans." <laughs> so good. It's so good. Um, one of the best lines is Tywin is like, he asks Jamie, "What do you want?" And he's like, and Jamie just says, "Well, dinner would be nice." <laughs> and that's and that's pretty much how I view Tywin's kids. Like that's really you know they just want to fucking eat and do whatever. Like, mm -hmm. and I, so I, I I empathize with Tywin in some ways because he, he you know he meets Arya, and Arya is you know he immediately has Arya's number. He knows Arya is probably some highborn girl um, mm. who has escaped the North and is a victim of the War of the Five Kings. And he knows that she's intelligent mm. from the first time he meets her. And so he, I think he feels a special connection to Arya um, that is grandfatherly and that really humanizes Tywin and makes us feel like, you know, mm. made me feel some type of way when Tyrion killed him. Um, I felt for Arya. I said, oh man, you know, I really, um, I feel bad because how is Arya, how do you think Arya is going to react to Tywin dying? You know. mm. Yeah, it was. Mm, I don't know. Two, excuse me. Two things there. I think because Tywin was on. <coughs> Tywin was on her list, right? Wasn't he? 
Uh, oof, that's Arya's a good list. question. I, I want to say, I want to say he wasn't. Mm. But um, there may be a slight difference between the list because remember the li- one thing about the list is it gets bigger and smaller, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I, I want to say he wasn't, but he may have been. You you may want to look that up, babe. I'm just looking it up now. But um, uh, uh, what was I going to say? The other thing, I think, yeah, may- maybe just Tywin kind of, yeah, kind of had a connection with her. See, I can't remember their whole interaction. I just remember thinking that it was, uh, um, that it was, uh, it was a cool kind of thing, you know. Um, I so- I just just saw it too because I have been kind of watching rewatching Game of Thrones in preparation for seven. Mm. Um, and she's being kept in the pens at Harrenhal. Tywin comes in and is kind of is pissed off with the Lannister army because they're just executing people instead of putting them to work. And the first thing he says, to, and the first thing that happens is, you know, Pulliver threatens her, and he says, "She's not. He's not going to kill you, right? right. Um, mm. This one's a girl, you idiot." <laughs> I thought that was so cute. Um, <laughs> And, and he tests her intelligence. Well, why are you dressed as a boy? And she says, safer to travel. And he means so smart, right? Yeah, he yeah, knows yeah, from right. the jump just how intelligent Arya really is. And um, I think that he rather cultivate that than to destroy it. And so, you know, that, that scene, my favorite one is where he says to her, are you hungry? And I'm like, yay! <laughs> Yeah, because that's right. She she comes in. That that was the scene I was thinking of, where where he, she comes in, she sits down and, and starts chowing away while they while he's kind of talking to her, right? Right, right. And he talks yeah. about his father, Titus, which is um, that's the whole story of Castamere. Um, yeah, yeah. Does that uh, stuff does that stuff happen in the books though? Does do, do they have that no, interaction? No, no, no. There's yeah. no Tywin doesn't ever come to Heron Hall so while Arya's there, so. There, that That's relationship is thought, purely yeah. in the series. Yeah, uh, according to this, um, the Tywin Lannister was on her list, but only in the TV show. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but if uh, it says if she knew that he orchestrated the red wedding, she probably would have moved him to the top of her list. Which, yes, I imagine she would have. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Oh hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, well, I think she would have. Or- she may have had Jack and kill him if she had thought he was going to do all that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. True story. I love, I love when Gendry gives her shit. Like you could have had anybody. You could have said Joffrey. You could have said Tywin. And he, and she's like, just shut up, just shut up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is my answer to everything. Anyone challenges me, just shut up. Just shut up. Right? I got this. I got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's very interesting. I'd, I'd forgotten that that, that wasn't uh, part of the books. So that, that's kind of an interesting development in the show, um, I suppose, that I kind of enjoyed. A lot of people who um, watch the show and have read the books, they say that's one of their favorite show-only moments, if not their absolute favorite show-only moment, mm. is um, Arya... Uh, Arya and Tywin, which I mean, God knows, I'd watch a spinoff show of just Arya and Tywin, <laughs> <laughs> like the odd couple just getting into oh, no. it. Right? Oh no, <laughs> that's funny. Shit, yeah. Um, and then and then obviously, uh, you know, Tywin meets his end. That that was one of the things uh, that I remember reading uh, about and thinking about as well is is how, um, you know, these these uh, huge grand people with all this power and stuff just meet their end in such um mundane ways i mean i suppose ned didn't really but but tywin on a toilet <laughs> you know um right you know uh rob while he was just eating some dinner um right. you know, uh um, really was- while he's getting changed you know <laughs> yep yep yeah just, you know, so that they, they didn't die in the heat of battle or, or while they were, while they were, you know, doing, you know, grand, amazing things, you know, they, they weren't, you know, ah, doing all this. Sort of stuff. They just, they, they just died in these really yeah, so, s- sort of small mundane ways, you know? Yeah. The only person I can think of right this moment who kind of gets a, an exciting death, if you will, is Oberon Marteau. Um, yeah. True story. Yeah. And, yeah. And that, oh God, I don't want to. <laughs> that's the one clip of Game of Thrones I will never watch again. 
<laughs> like, uh, yeah, just that big that that cracking sound. This just like mm-hmm. oh, my oh my god. Yeah, I like, haven't I haven't watched that far in the series, but I've seen the clip. So you know, I'm just like oh, you know, yeah, and obviously no, I've read, it, read that yeah. clip, and it was just like no, nah, come on, because you know, I was it's, I was so. I was so joyful because I was like, yes, he's won. This is great. And then suddenly. Right, 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 right. Uh, I was like, finally, fuck him yeah. up, kill him, and let's get done with this. And of course, it ain't it ain't going down. It's Game of Thrones, baby. It ain't going down like that. Um, nope, nope, nope. And oh my God. I was, you know, and you just, you get to that moment, Oberon's got him, and you're just like, yeah, yeah. And he keeps like <laughs> demanding he confess, and you're just like, shut up, Oberon, and do the shit. Come on, bro. Dang. Yeah, we, we're tired of the mountain and this old fucking tall murdering ass anyway. Um, oh, but <laughs> I'd have Bit to of a say, side note, I remember watching. I remember watching. Um, uh, fuck, what's his name? Who's the guy who plays Tyrion? Um, um, oh God, I know his name. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage was on the Daily Show and he was talking about hanging out with the dude who played the mountain, right? And he's just this huge guy, this like massive, massive guy who can just lift ridiculous amounts of weight and stuff. And he said they would go out to dinner and stuff and he would order just like three whole chickens and just hump, hump, hump. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> he's more I'll like take... he's more like the hound than anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. What would you like for dinner? Um, chicken, thanks. Um, yeah, uh, a three. Just keep thanks, bringing them. Be, just keep bringing them. Keep piling them on. Mm. Yeah, for real. Oh, this no, like, no. don't let me. Don't. I don't want to see bones. All I want to see is see flesh. No. Yeah, exactly. Right. All the time. Chicken all day, <laughs> roasted. Boom. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, but, yeah, no, um, I can't think of anyone else who kind of goes. I mean, and, unless you're talking about like Rhaegar, but we don't see that happen. That happens in. in we're backstory, never gonna you know? see. Well, yeah, and and my thing is, mm. you know, I don't want them to do. I kind of like, you know, they they just announced they're going to be like four spinoff series to Game of Thrones. They haven't decided uh, like what's going to happen or whatever. Um, to be fair, there <laughs> is that. Um, have you read the uh, what's the that the one that Peter uh, the, sorry that George R. R. Martin wrote about Dunk the 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 um, yeah Dunk and Egg. Yeah, yeah. I haven't read That's it. A, my I, best, my best friend gave me the synopsis though. So, <laughs> fully I, I have the, I have the, um, oh, I have the graphic novels lying around somewhere. That's how I read them. Well, see, you smart. That's that's smart. All right. Yeah, it's cute, right? Yeah. Well, you know, my first encounter with Game of Thrones was too. I read the. I didn't read the. I um, audio book the first one. And oh, that, nice. that really, that really helped. Cause I was like my first, you know, that audible shit you get the, you know, buy, <laughs> you know, sign up and get one free. So I was like game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, and um, it makes yeah, it see, easier it was, to get through. It yeah. Was, well, see for me, it was, um, it was, I watched the TV show first. Uh, oh yeah. I watched and, it. I watched that TV show, honey. I was like, I was there. And then yeah, well, it was like, season one, it was season one had, hadn't season two hadn't come out yet. And I watched season one. Uh, a couple of times and that's when I then I read the books I started reading the books and I got I finished the books before like I said so, so I stopped what like I, I was really disillusioned with season two I, I didn't like it at all um with how they you didn't no, what didn't you no, like I, um there, there were just character choices like the way that characters uh were you know it's been such a long time since i thought about one of them was that thing that i said about with john you know like john for me in the tv series or in that second season Mm -hmm. at least he was more of like a an angsty teenager who was just kind of like i'm gonna and he and he didn't he was just kind of annoying and 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 angsty but in the books he he was more to me he seemed more like ghost the 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 dire wolf more like Mm -hmm. kind of sleek and just he kind of he had his, the, oh. yeah. He he, he he had his he, um his his morals and he stuck to them and stuff like that. He you know like the yeah. thing with with uh, what's her face. He didn't he didn't kill her. He he missed on purpose and she ran away. Um, but in the TV shows they changed that. Um, and then there was another bit which I saw. Ah, oh, that's that's it. What happens? You know he has to fight. He has to fight his, you know, he's he's with the wildlings, right? And he's corn captured, half and hand. He's, yeah, he has Co- to fight corn, corn half. half. Yeah, yeah. And in the books, they have this time together, 
and they <laughs> develop this understanding that John has to do this. And there's an understanding between them that mm -hmm. John has to do this and John's not okay with it, but he has to kill Core and Halfhand. And in the end, there's an acceptance between them and John kills Core and Halfhand. And, and, and so John, you know, that that's tough for him, but he has to do what he has to do in the TV shows. He's just like, Rah, I'm angry with you. And then, and, and they, he kills them. And it's like, Oh, right. They you know, don't, I, they don't go into that kind of the depth of, of that relationship. Yeah. I just, I, I feel, but I feel that really impacts John's character as well, because like I say, in the, in the TV show, mm -hmm. it just feels like he, he, he was, he's just an angry kid who was just, he, okay, I'm just going to kill this guy, whatever, you know, because, because they, they were kind of, I think they were kind of, you know, fighting kind of, kind of like play fighting, you know, making it look like they were angry at each other kind of thing. And in the TV show, it just came across as they were actually fighting. But in the books, you could, you had that, that background of them having that understanding and, and, and knowing that that was just a, a facade that had to happen so that John could be accepted by the wildlings and go off, you know? Um, I will admit, that, I kind of got that. For, I, it took a second, though. I will say that they, they didn't go into much as much depth as um, they did in the books about it, certainly. Um, and I, I'll give you that. I think that that was sort of something they rushed a bit so they could get John to the wildlings. Um, and even then, it still feels like a fucking year before he gets there. Um, but I, I sort of got that. You know, Corin was trying to instigate shit with John because he because John had to kill him, and mm. I did get from the from the series that John didn't he admired Corin happy. Yeah, um, he wanted it, to you know it, he volunteered seems, to go with him. It seems more like, but, you know, John actually just became ang like in in the series. It seemed like what the way that it was portrayed it just seemed like John had just got angry with Corin Halfhand and then was like, okay, well, fuck it, I'm going to kill him rather than. Um, that I know this is what I have to do, and we both understand this, and we, you know, I, I and Corin Halfhand has has come to peace with the fact that he has to die so that John can go on and all that sort of business, you know. Yeah, uh, you, you certainly don't get. I will say this: I didn't get from Corin the acceptance that the book gave up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. I, I I think that that part was sort of rushed over, but that um, distance from John. Because I think they get into What's more that, than one fight. Um, if I, I did get that acceptance from John, like that yeah. John, John was resistant um, and didn't want to hurt Corn. He admired him, but he, mm. he, but I, I, but I think that that did get rushed over a bit. And you can mm. feel you, you sort of, you, it's very visceral. Again, it's not something that is really super duper explained. And I think that 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 has something to do with it too but yeah. i will say that um i kind of got from the from from kind of the way corn was talking and the guy who plays corn half in the show i mean i love him to death um okay. i i sort of got from the way that corn was talking to john about you know you've got to if we can get one in the arm if we can get one one of us in the army is worth a thousand of us on the wall mm -hmm. um I sort of got that feeling from him that, yeah, you know, he he knows he's going to have to sacrifice himself in order to, for John to continue on to be that spy. But at the mm -hmm. same time, you 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 want more, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> yeah, I just that that was just something that that I felt really impacted John's character for me in that second okay. series. And but just thinking about it, um, you know, it, it's kind of interesting. So. Obviously, John kills Corrin Halfhand, and and as a repercussion, I mean that's that for itself is breaking the vows of the Night's Watch, right? Yeah. I mean, he, so he's already forsaken his vows in that sense. So I suppose, I mean, the the the, the breaking of the vows by sleeping with Ygritte is is a little, I suppose, a little easier for him. I don't even consider that a break. You know, a, a, a real quote unquote breaking of the vows. You know, I'll give I give it to the the men of the Night's Watch. Um, that they're they're gonna have sex with somebody, you know. I suppose I mean? they do though, right? They, you know, it's it's kind yeah. of known that they go down to the mole town and 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 do it, right? Yeah, I was just gonna say they go down to the mole town brothel and they get it on. Um, <laughs> yeah, but see, John, I, I suppose John, uh, you know, takes them more seriously. The vows, it seems like, because because for him, it's quite a it's quite a big thing, right? 
he takes those vows oh, quite yeah. seriously. And maybe that's because he's quite new to the Night's Watch and he he wants to, you know, he, he wants to have that impact and 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 impress his, his you know, uh, you know, the, the leaders or whatever. So Oh yeah. That, and and I think that John that's John's character too. I think that, that that's maybe one of the ways for me at least that they uphold the idea of John's character from the book is that he's resistant to breaking these vows, not just because, you know, he's he's obviously, you know, in the Night's Watch, but that he he admires this organization. He mm -hmm. um <laughs> what? Tom, are you going? Are you still here? Yeah. yeah. Was what was that? Okay. What were you laughing at? Oh, um, my boyfriend just um, hit me up on Messenger and was like, five hours, baby. Damn, are you breaking down every episode?" <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a good job. You've been on here longer than I have. I'm impressed. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, um, it's a little more than five hours. I was around and you know half talking um, <laughs> while you guys for like thirty minutes before you guys showed up. So I'm just like, oh, geez, I, I good again. Job. I thank you. Well, I was babbling. So, you know, this this is the real shit when you get some another human here to talk about this shit. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's fun. It's really cool. Like I said, I haven't talked about this stuff in ages, so it's it's, it's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. We, this, um, is, I, this is something yeah. I very much enjoy. This is I, I love talking about Game of Thrones. And I kind of wanted to have this hangout because um, sometimes I feel like we get a little mired in the YouTube muck. And mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. sometimes we just, you know, don't talk about the stuff that we, we love. And I know those antis love Game of Thrones. They try to, oh, it's getting all feminist now. I don't want to watch this shit no more. But they know they're going to watch this shit, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, well, that, that's what happened. Uh, like, I, I kind of uh, enjoyed that as well. I, I've, I've been, I talked to this guy. His name's Dolphin Radio. And him and I have pretty opposing views. He's, he's an anti-feminist. But we talk about all sorts of other stuff all the time. That's one of our things is we, we hang out and we talk about – Douglas Adams and we talk about um, New Zealand and we talk about beer and we talk about just other things, you know, so that's that. And he kind of gave me that idea of doing this kind of thing. And, and so um, I've done that with him. And then I did that with Steve, like I hung out with Steve Shives and we just talked about movies and music and, and all that sort of crap. And it's great to do that rather than just being all political all the fucking time. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Oh my God. I feel that like it's a breath of fresh air. It is because as much as I enjoy, like, and I don't make videos as often as I probably should or want to just, you know, time constraints. And, and sometimes I just get like, I get all crazy, about like, is this, should I even be saying this, you know, but it, yeah. with, with something like Game of Thrones or, you know, something that I really enjoy Westworld, like I can, oh God, you know, honey, we even talk about Westworld. Um, I need to watch Westworld. I apologize. I haven't watched it yet. I need to honey, watch it. Honey, you gotta, you gotta watch that Westworld. I love it. <laughs> Um, I've heard very worry. good things. <laughs> it's it's enjoyable. It definitely is enjoyable. It's got that mystery element that that I think is mm. um is important to to a lot of series now. You know, there's there's not I, one reason I kind of kind of dropped out of TV for a hot minute was because I was just like there's no mystery. Like I would say from 2009 to like 2011, mm. I didn't watch anything that was on television. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was straight like youtube all the time which is mm. okay but you do kind of get a little depressed <laughs> yeah 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 YouTube. well so that's one of the reasons i like so. <clears throat> one of the reasons i like like adventure time and and rick and morty and and, oh, I love uh, rick and morty. what's the other one um gravity falls have you seen gravity falls i haven't i've heard great things though. There's, but there's this mystery element involved in those things you know what there's all these things about like in, in, in adventure time the the world that you're in and why it's the way that it is and all this sort of stuff and and little bits kind of get revealed here and there and the same with rick and morty you know you discover more about you know the world and the universe and rick's past and the family's past and and all that sort of stuff Yay. and the same with gravity falls is the great gravity falls is this it's two seasons long and so mm -hmm. you know it's got a full story arc and you just discover everything about well not everything but a lot of the stuff about about um the past of of the characters and and then the why the world is the way that it is and all that sort of business is, is very good and i like that you know it, and it keeps you watching right you keep you know yeah. it's like it's like broadchurch have you seen broadchurch i haven't oh baby you have to watch broadchurch it's incredible <laughs> it's a Ooh, crime okay. drama and it's like okay. eight uh the first series is eight eight episodes long and uh it's just it's it's so good so david tennant um and olivia coleman and it's amazing oh cool yeah. Um, anyway, uh, John and John Snow. <laughs> um, 
back to his to his character, I was thinking, um, you know, uh, you know, maybe one of the reasons why he's so attached to upholding that honor is because he's, you know, he, for so long he's 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 tried to have a he's been such an outsider in his his own family. You know, he's never felt he's never felt attached to his family as much as his brothers have. Um, mm. And he knows that he's never going to have a, a legacy as part of that. So he, you know, he he finds that within the the Night's Watch, and I think that might be part of the reason why, you know, the the other people who come to the Night's Watch, they're they're looters and beggars and rapists and all that sort of stuff. So you know, of course, they're probably going to break their honor and all that sort of shit. You know, that's that, that you you could expect that more from those people. But when it's someone like John, who's chosen to come into the Night's Watch, um, and 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 has that and wants that to be like his thing, you know, that, that uh, you can see how him breaking that honor and breaking that code would be so much more of a, uh, of a big thing for him. Right. Oh, totes. totes. Yeah. Totes. Devs. <laughs> God, I'm too totally. So we're saying totes. Um... <laughs> we ain't got not, 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 not enough time for totally. we got just totes. Uh, but yeah, I could I could totally see that that he um, this is this is his way of having a family legacy or at least you know upholding his version of a family legacy as he's not allowed yeah. to do that as a Stark, um, mm. and so he um, he takes his his you know choice very seriously and I I I can definitely see that because he made the choice as opposed to you know uh, I made it instead of making the choice out of. Um, out of kind of you know a get castrated or the wall um mm. he made a choice of you know live kind of an outsider's life at winterfell and maybe kind of move up the ranks there to castilian or something like that um mm. uh and forsake forsook that kind of for the night's watch so i could definitely see why he he's so keen to uphold his vows but i mm. think at the same time um i, I me personally if i'm lord eddard stark and I know, you know, and I know John, I'm not letting my son be him biological or not. I'm not letting my son go off and join the Night's Watch, knowing that my family's kind of in a vulnerable position um, anyway. Mm. Um, but that's that's kind of me and my own like diss on Lord Eddard. I think that in terms of John, um, yeah, his character is the type, he's the type of person where he, he takes his vows very seriously. If he says he's going to do something, if he says he's going to clean up rat shit, you know, at the Shadow Tower, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And um, so I, I can see where there are elements of kind of the series or whatever where, where that his character isn't as well upheld, let's say, as, as yeah, yeah. the books do. Um, mm. I, I yeah, thought yeah. that I, I didn't okay I, that happens when at five oh no that's six that's six so I, I won't go into season six because that's, okay. that's kind of beyond beyond our realms right I'll yeah, we'll, right. we'll save that you'll watch six and then you'll come back to me okay. I gotta read I'm, I want to read it before I watch it that's the thing see, I, see, I, you know. then you're gonna be waiting for you they're gonna be done with the series <laughs> honey yeah, I know. I know. That's why I have to be like, are you surprised that I've managed to avoid spoilers this amount of time? No. No? Oh. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not surprised because because you're fucking, you're Michael Rollins. I mean, you'll, you'll do Damn it. That's right. I ain't gonna, I'm gonna right? get no spoilers. <laughs> I've managed right? to go through a five-hour hangout or a four-hour, however long I've been here and, and not get any spoilers. Nailed it. <laughs> right? So, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I tell you the one thing I am good at. Um... I saw Star. I will tell you this little story. I saw Star Wars: The Force Awakens the day it came out, nice. and I for and, and for two weeks because I was supposed to go because me, mom, and dad were all gonna go on Christmas to see it. And mm. for two weeks, I didn't say anything for like a week. I didn't say anything to anybody about it. I was they were like, "Oh, how was Star Wars? It was good." Nice, nice. Right. I, I dig it. I dig that. I am the queen of like if we're gonna talk about something. Uh, and I, I will not spoil it. If I don't like you, you'll know it because I'll spoil the fuck out <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> um, sure, we, uh, yeah, no, 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 totally. One of the other things I didn't, um, I didn't lie, and I said this to to Christy as well, is is the um, is the way that 
that Rob's relationship with the with the nurse woman was handled in the TV show as opposed to the mm-hmm. books. Um, I thought that, you know, in the books, we only get it from Catelyn's perspective, right? We only ever get that relationship. So it's always kind of a distant thing. We get we get her opinion about it. We get we hear about it through her because we never have a Rob chapter. Mm-hmm. But in the book, in the TV show, it's just this it's this kind of big thing, right? It's this 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 romantic comedy thing going on between these two, which is fine, but I feel like it takes away from screen time that we could have had from much more interesting stuff, you know, like more Aria stuff or more Tyrion stuff or something like that, you know? Right. I, I, I was never intrigued by his relationship with Talisa. Um, mm. I, you know, Lily slash, slash Jean Westerling. Um, yeah. I was, I was never um, intrigued by it. I didn't care. I thought it, I, it always, in the books, it makes a lot more sense, right? He knocked this girl up and he felt, you know, honor bound to take care of her. Mm-hmm. And so marrying her was the, was the logical conclusion. All mm-hmm. the, in, in the, in the series, it makes no sense because you're king now. Kings, mm. when, when you love someone and you can't marry them, you still with them. You just, mm. you know, you just kind of keep your wife locked up in a tower somewhere. And, you know, you just travel around with your friggin', you know, your nurse lover. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think that you know, what bothered me about it was just kind of how stupidly, how stupid it all seemed, you know. Mm. Rob didn't have to not marry Rob, you know, Rosalind could just married her, you know, mm. and kept on messing with Talisa. And, and yeah, he could have yeah, yeah. even declared Talisa's son to be the heir to Winterfell or whatever, you know, fuck, he's the king of the North. Give him any hold fast, give him whatever, send him to the Night's Watch. But it, it just, it made, I, I thought it made Rob look really, really foolish. Mm. Um, whereas in the, in the books, it's clear that it's not, it's not so much foolishness or sort of like boyish, you know, kind of like love, but it's, it's his father's sense of honor that dooms Rob. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, I think so too. That's um, you know, I suppose that's something that kind of carries over to both Rob and to to John. You know, that 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 sense of honor and that sense of, you know, uh, you know, I want to say, uh, yeah, yeah, that just that that sense of honor, I suppose, is you know, um, having yeah, that that do the right thinginess. Mm, it's a tricky one, that one, eh? The old doing the right thinginess. <laughs> mm. Right. Hey, baby, I'm going to have to go because I'm supposed to be going out for coffee with someone real soon. <laughs> All right. Well, but, well, I hope I hope you have some fun at, at coffee, honey. Yeah, this has been uh, surprisingly fantastic. I, 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 um, I thought I wouldn't have a lot to talk about because I thought, you know, you guys, you know, you've you've seen all this stuff and I, I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't know. But I could talk for another five hours. <laughs> right, right. Like we could keep going. But I was I was going to cut you off and be like, honey, listen. I've enjoyed every minute of it, but like, I got to like, like, need some time, but I'm glad, I'm glad we all got to talk. We, we definitely <laughs> will. Let's make, you know, I want to make sure we do at least one, um, before seven starts up. Uh, cause once, listen, once seven comes, I ain't talking to nobody, ain't no YouTube videos getting made. Uh-uh, fuck all that. Seven, <laughs> seven. We need to get Tim um, in here as well, because apparently he knows all about it too. So we should, we should. Right, right. Tim. Get Tim. I'm trying to get Tim. I'm trying to get Tim and my boyfriend who loves, who loves this books and the series. So, um, Great. we all need to That'd get together awesome. and do that. I'm so glad we got to, you know, finally talk. Like we haven't talked, talked. We've just kind of been yeah, back it's and true. forth in the group. It's and true. Stuff, so, um, I'm glad yeah, we got to kind of talk face to face. So I'm going to let yeah, you know. Me too. It was I real will fun. talk to you soon. Thanks baby. Yeah, we'll talk soon. Yeah. All right. Bye, Bye sweet. Bye.